Let's look at derivative properties of the exponential function. Our main result is the derivative of e to the x is e to the x itself. So if I take the derivative of the exponential function, I do nothing. First, we'll show this result, and then we'll take a look at some consequences. Now, to show this, I'm going to start with the equation natural log of e to the x is equal to x. Two ways to see this. Either we note that natural log and exponential are inverse functions. So if I apply one to the other, then they cancel out and they leave us with an x. Or I could just use properties of natural logarithm. So we have the exponent rule, which lets me take the x, put it down in front. And then we have that natural log of e is equal to one. So we're left with x. Now, to get our result, we're just gonna apply the chain rule to our composition here. So, if I take the derivative of natural log of box, okay, the rule is, we're take box, the inside function, flip it over, then we multiply by the derivative of box with respect to x. So, if we apply it to this composition, what do we do? Well, I'm gonna take one over the inside, so I have one over e to the x, times the derivative of e to the x. And I don't know what that is, that's what I'm looking for. Then on the other side, take the derivative with respect to x, I get one. Now, we could push this e to the x to the other side, and then that gives us our result. Okay, first application, let's take a look at the graph of e to the x. So if I wanna graph e to the x, your guide is gonna to be to graph three points. I'm gonna graph e to the x at minus one, zero, and one. Now, e is roughly three, okay, 2.7. So e to the minus one, we just flip 2.7 over, it's roughly one third. e to the zero is gonna be one, e to the one is just e, which is roughly 2.7. So we get our three points on the graph here as so. Then we connect the dots, to the right, we go off to infinity. To the left, we're gonna have a horizontal asymptote at zero. And that's our graph of e to the x. Now, if we take the derivative, we're gonna get back e to the x. If I take e to any number, I get back a positive number. Okay, so if I put in a positive number, we're just gonna get e to that positive number, which is always positive. If I put zero in, I get one. If I put a negative number in, we're just gonna have e to some positive number but in the denominator. So it's under a one, so that's always positive also. So this is always positive. Derivative is always positive means our function is always increasing, and we can see that on the graph. If I take the second derivative, so we're gonna take the derivative of e to the x, I get e to the x, and then I take the derivative again, I get e to the x. So this is also always gonna be positive, where the second derivative is positive, our graph is concave up. So we note our graph also has both facing up at every point. Next, we verify that our result is consistent with the definition of derivative as a slope of a tangent line. So we have e to the x prime defined as the limit as h goes to zero, e to the x plus h minus e to the x divided by h. So here, I have the slope of the secant line through our graph, the points x plus h and x. Then we take the limit as h goes to zero. So that'll give us the slope of the tangent line. First manipulation I can do, e to the x plus h is equal to e to the x times e to the h. So we could factor out an e to the x. Now our limit is an h, so I could pull the e to the x to the outside, okay? As far as the limit's concerned, it's just a number. That puts the focus on the limit as h goes to zero of e to the h minus one divided by h. That's gonna go to one. Now, for here, we'll just check a small number, see if it's in the ballpark. So if I take my calculator, I'll put an h equal to 0 .001, out comes 1.0005, and that's good enough for us. So out we get e to the x as promised. Finally, 
We have the chain rule with the exponential function. So if I have e to the box, where box is some function of x, take the derivative, what happens? Well, the derivative e to the x with respect to x is just itself. So our first step here is just to return e to the box. You do nothing. Then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the inside function here is box, so I get a box prime. For some straightforward examples, okay, if I have e to the x squared plus x, what do we do? We just rewrite it, so I have e to the x squared plus x. Then we take the derivative of the exponent. So that's gonna give me 2x plus one. If we take the derivative of e to the cosine x, okay, we just rewrite it, e to the cosine x, then we multiply by the derivative of the exponent. So I get minus sine x.